Welcome everyone. I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to wake the world up to what's possible, one brave word at a time. And here today to help me with that mission are some of the authors of an amazing new book that we have coming out. This one is called We Lead, Building Connection, Community, and Collaboration for Women in Business. Alison Loftus is our lead author, and I want to say a huge thank you to her before I introduce these amazing women to you today. Alison, you had a really big vision to bring your leading lady ambassadors together to really talk about women in business and leadership. And I love this mission, and I'm so grateful to you for bringing such a stellar cast of authors together. You guys, this is the book, man. If we had this book at the beginning of our business, just imagine all of these amazing strategies and tools that would have catapulted my business. I know, like, you know, 10 steps ahead instantly. Um, so big thank you to you, Alisanne. And who do I have with me today? Camille Campins Adams helps authors with big dreams turn into thought leaders with big impact through the launch of their nonfiction books. Jennifer Bonk is the owner of the Bonk team of Keller Williams Flagship of Maryland, a residential real estate team focused on giving back to the community through marketing with a cause. And Julie Campbell is here. She's the president and CEO of the Severn Leadership Group, cultivating a new generation of leaders who catalyze teams for transformative change. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to talk to you ladies. Camille, you're gonna start the party off. Tell us about this amazing chapter that you wrote. Thanks, Laura. I really appreciate the introduction. Uh, so I wrote chapter 12. It's called Unlocking the Power of Vulnerability. And the subtitle is actually Using Radical Authenticity to Amplify the Impact of Your Words. Because as a writing coach, as a book launch strategist, I believe very, very strongly in the power of our words. So in the chapter, I share a lot about how vulnerability is not a weakness. It's actually a strength, right? There's this misconception that being vulnerable actually shows weakness, but I believe the opposite. I believe it shows incredible courage, incredible strength. And Brene Brown would back me up on this. Um, so the book is about being, or my chapter is about being real, about being open and being courageous throughout our leadership journey, because we're all on a leadership journey here, whether you're writing a book, whether you're starting a business, regardless of where you are, even as a parent, it's a leadership journey. I have found personally that vulnerability is the key to success. Anytime I've been open, anytime I've been vulnerable, people have been attracted to me. There's something about vulnerability that is just a catalyst for immense growth in your life and in the life of those that are around you. So really I talk about being authentic, embracing who you truly are, not shying away from it, and connecting with others on a deeper, more genuine level. I personally believe that we can create these meaningful connections and we can inspire others when we do three things, when we share our stories, when we share our actual struggles, and when we share our truths, all with uh, radical authenticity and vulnerability. So when we lead with that vulnerability, we're creating a world where genuine connections and heartfelt stories can change lives. And that's what I am all about here. I love it, Camille. Well, you, I hope you know I love it because I have a very similar mission. I was talking to someone who was interviewing me the other day and they're, they're like, why did you do brave healer? Like, why just, you know, why not just healer? I'm like, and why brave? I said, well, Brave to me means you're showing up in your vulnerability, right? And we had that whole discussion about like what brave means. Um, so I love that so much. I think that what you speak of is sometimes really, really difficult for people to actually do. So easy to say, hard to do. What would you tell somebody who is in the stuck struggle of, oh my gosh, is this too much information? <laughs> Well, honestly, when you're writing, right, like if you're going to write the memoir, you're writing the story, I always encourage my authors to share everything because it's personal, right? Like that first draft, just get it all off your chest. You can pull things back throughout the editing process. That doesn't mean that you have to actually go to print and publish with all of that out there. But for me, when I was in grad school, I was sharing some stuff that was actually really hard for me to write out. I was writing memoir. And my professors were calling me out. They're like, 
you are holding back there. Like the whole story isn't here. And I personally was like, I don't want to go there. I really don't want to go there. It was really painful, especially like the deeper and deeper you go into the vulnerability, the more painful it is to write it because you're having to relive those experiences. So I know from personal experience that yes, it's, you have to do the hard thing, but you can always work through the editing process to make sure that you're not sharing what doesn't really need to be shared for the purposes of the story. Yeah, I love that. Um, thank you for sharing those pieces. I think the idea of reliving trauma, it does come up over and over in my writing world with people. But what I believe is that as you visit it, you're touching and shifting the energy, which surfaces as a healing crisis of sorts. And so it's going to be an awareness process that helps you realize that you'll, you know, you'll get through this writing process and you'll actually come out of it and onto the other side of it better. That writing is a healing process. So um, yeah, love, love, love. Um, Camille, thank you for being here today. Of course, thank you. Jennifer, how about you? Tell us about your amazing chapter. Yeah, good morning. Uh, my chapter is chapter 11. It is Home Sale with Heart. And it is my story of how I built a top team um, within the Keller Williams family um, through learning and giving back to the community and marketing um, with a cause, which is, um, you know, supporting other businesses and through that support, um, supporting my very own neighbors. So what I love the most about what you do um, and what you're writing about is the give back component. And I want people to understand, business owners to understand that when they incorporate that piece, there's a huge power to it. What is that for you? What do you want people to know about that? So I just want people to know that my mission is 100% giving back to the community, um, you know, making things available to community members that maybe don't have access to um, free photos with the Easter Bunny or Santa, or Santa, a pie at Thanksgiving, no matter if they're doing business with us or not, um, trunk or treat with a thousand plus community members coming from a, a large area. Um, plus I'm on boards and um, giving back to the community that way through time at the hospitals and, uh, you know, it's really, really important to me to to build my product that way versus just going out there and talking about myself. It's hard for me to talk about myself. <laughs> it, makes it, <laughs> it makes it easier to talk about what you're doing. Definitely makes it easier. It also just puts this energy of purpose and generosity and the and that energy, I think, expands. That's why, it, you know, that model of business is is so so brilliant you're making me think and and since i met you i'm like oh my gosh how does she do all of that and how does she prioritize her own health in the middle of it want to comment on that it's hard <laughs> i have to put sort of my own baggage to the side and i certainly have my share of baggage um so just making sure that when i get up in the morning i'm having a healthy breakfast going for a two and a half mile walk before i start my day um you know trying to make healthy choices for myself and for my children um with food and exercise and uh i think that you know using those things helps me to to just keep a good strong foundation and making time you know for my kids is important to me and this gives me and allows me the flexibility to do so. Yeah, for sure. That's a version of a miracle morning for sure. I love that. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Julie, let's hear about your chapter. Good morning, Laura. Thanks for, thanks for having me. So I have written chapter 10. The title is What's Love Got to Do With It? Harness Your Superpower to Lead a Business or team people trust. And I'm coming from it uh, at the team aspect. And I believe in the power and wisdom of teams. And so for those that are leading teams, whether it's in their business, in their home, um, or for me as a nonprofit leader, um, 
there are some key components that that leader uh, must have. And so my chapter goes into that. Um, so how do we build these powerful teams? Through an example of um, in, in igniting one of our virtues. So Severn Leadership believes that there are five essential virtues that one leader should follow in order to empower these and catalyze these teams of excellence. And so one of those virtues is love. And so that is the superpower that as leaders, no matter where we're leading, we can tap into and really make a difference. You know, in an interview um, a little bit earlier, we were talking a little bit about we, we aren't doing business as usual. And that just comes to my mind as you talk about love being the superpower, being the driving force, because wouldn't it be cool if that was taught in business school? <laughs> Right. right. What else do you want people to know about that? I mean, like, how are we going to change that mindset? It is so old and conditioned right. to love. So, um, you know, when people think about love and love in the workplace and their team, they think about um, a feeling. Well, this is really an action. It's the golden rule that so many of us know and um, like to think that we live by the golden rule. So it's inherent in our being. Um, but we are also built or cultivated or created uh, to, to be in relationship with others. And so um, cultivating relationships, you, you do need to understand how to love someone. So, you know, I work with executives and military members and, um, you know, like I said, nonprofit leaders and women business owners. And um, oftentimes you think, well, I can't love in the workplace, but when we break it down and what it actually means uh, to love those that you serve, your customers, your clients, um, and the behaviors associated with that, you realize, especially as women, um, it's in our bones. And so being able to tap into that and use it appropriately and in the workplace is just escalates uh, your, your results, no matter what, what you're doing in your business. Yes. Agree, agree, agree. Um, Julie, thank you for being here today. We're going to hear more from all of these women here on this next question. Jennifer, What's a strategy that has helped you the most in terms of your business success? So I think the marketing with a cause has been the strategy that's that's really helped me. Um, just supporting the the community has has allowed the community to support me back. Over eighty percent of our business is referral based. And over and over again, we have people that call us and say, it's because you do so much for the community that we wanted to, to call you to use your services. So if I'm a business and I haven't incorporated that yet, what would be that first step, do you think, for somebody who hasn't quite developed a community program or give back? Sure. So I would think uh, maybe jump into something that is already a program that's being put on by somebody else. Um, for example, I said our trunk or treat, um, you know, that's open to any business in the community that they could join in on something like that. So that's just a small start. And they're showing, sending that out to their database and showing their database that they're supporting the community through that event. Um, you know, and then a lot of the different communities have small groups that do events, uh, Chamber of Commerce, for example, you always have the option of jumping into one of their events if you have that in your area. Um, in another touch to the database telling how you're giving back any volunteer opportunities. Um, we often go and serve um, food to less fortunate and I bring my entire family um, with me when I do that. And that's just another opportunity to share and to invite your database to join you um, when you do that. So you're giving back, but you're also giving that touch saying, hey, this is what I'm doing to help out the community. I would love for you to join me. Yeah, I love it. Um, thank you for all those awesome ideas. Um, Julie, how about you? What's a strategy? Give me one that you think has helped you the most in terms of business success. 
So I alluded to uh, the virtues that um, we ground our foundation on. And so they, I'm going to list them all, and then I'll, I'll pull out one that I, I don't write so much about in the chapter. So uh, my foundation over the years has been cultivated, and now I understand what I'm doing with this language from these five virtues, love, integrity, truth, excellence and relationships. And the key, um, not only to activate each of those and the, you know, understanding the behaviors, um, but also tapping into your emotional intelligence so you can live out those virtues fully. The virtue um, that has served me very well in my strategy is relationships. So um, building on uh good, healthy relationships. Um, so asking powerful questions, getting to know someone at the individual le level, uh, maybe outside of the business. And, you know, it aligns well with what, what Jennifer's doing, doing as well is building those relationships um, so that they support a common or higher purpose. And, our, you know, our purpose is really to change the face of leadership uh, to, to create a world where people are thriving. And so building on those relationships, activating through those other virtues and using your emotional intelligence to support those have been um, a strategy that I can tap into for any crisis or any success that we have. Yeah, really, really important. I think, I mean, it's all about relationships and, and people in general. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a point in my business where I turned uh, a corner and just was like, oh yeah, like people are the ones handing me their credit card. So if I am not making really great relationships and, you know, then it's going to be nothing. There's going to be nothing there. So um, that is super high on the list. Um, Camille, how about you? What's a strategy that's helped you the most in terms of your business success? Uh, so I'm going to it's kind of twofold, but it's very much what these ladies are already saying. It's connection. And it honestly, relationships, right? It we I was able to grow way media and marketing through the relationships that I've had. I didn't have a website. I didn't have a social media presence. I didn't have anything out there. It was literally personal connections that I had that allowed me to grow this to a multiple six-figure business, which is insane, right? Like I finally said, I have a marketing agency. I should probably have a website, um, but you don't need it when you're interacting with people and you're making those true connections with them. And to Jennifer's point, when you're getting out in the community, when you're giving back, you're actually interacting with people. Just exactly what Julie said, forming those true relationships with one another, that is where, where it really matters. And then the second point to that is not doing it alone. I tried to grow a business for a while on my own as a solopreneur. This is the other piece to the to the relationships and the connections is actually bringing in a team and aligning yourself with others who can help take you further. Because they say that you can get there, you can get there faster alone and further together. I actually think you can get there faster and further together. And so I tried to be a solopreneur for a really long time. It didn't do well. So the minute that I realized that I was being called to create this marketing agency, I knew I needed to lock arms with other people who had gifts and talents that were different than mine and that we were going to actually be able to, to rise together. And so I have a team of five people and I actually cultivated those relationships and the, the, the team within the business before I left a full-time job that I had, I actually put my needs aside. I was working a full-time job so that I wouldn't have to pull income from the company so that I can have other people within the company working and building it up while I was doing it kind of part-time because I was the connector. I was the one bringing in the relationships. I was the one still doing a lot of the work. I was working a lot of hours, but if it wasn't for my team, I don't believe, I, tr I truly don't believe that way would be where it is today. And I do talk about that in the chapter. I, I open up with the importance of having others around you that are going to help lift you up to success. Yes. Oh my goodness. A hundred percent agree with that one. I wouldn't be in my place either without my team and cultivating the team and going back to what Julie was talking about in terms of the 
virtues, um, values, virtues, how are we treating that team with love and brewing something that is a foundation of badass energy first, you know, um, I love that. I love talking about and, the and team. And it's fun too. Yeah. That's, that is. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> it can be. It better be, right? Like, what are we doing here if it's not a little bit fun? Um, okay. So most of the successful business women and, and women leaders I know have a really badass self-care routine. They understand the idea that you can give from that full cup or the overflow of that full cup, right? They get it. They're, they're in a routine of it. Julie, what's one of your favorite personal self-care practices? I like to sleep. So, uh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> and I've learned as I'm, as I'm getting a little bit older that it's not, um, it's not necessarily going to bed at the same time every night that that used to be. It's really waking up the same time every morning. And so I do get a lot done in the morning. And I do like Jen, I do uh, go for a nice walk most mornings or a run sometimes when I feel a little, little extra energy, but I'm, I'm trying to really hold to getting that sleep. And so that means knocking off work at night, not, not staying up, not watching a show, but getting, getting there and then making sure I get up at the same time every morning. I had a coach say naps are a success strategy. <laughs> I was like, yes, more sleep, more. And that's so foundational to your health, right? Just, yeah, that's a really, really important one. Camille, how about you? Give us a little window into one of your self-care practices. Uh, so I've gone through quite a few. I used to have the journaling collective, which was a little, um, membership that a lot of the leading ladies were aware of where I encouraged everyone to journal every day. But for me, I've taken it deeper. Um, I, yes, I love going for morning walks. I love working out, but what's been the most transformative for me and helped me is reading the Bible every day and like really being in the word and understanding that it's not from my own strength that I'm able to do what I'm able to do every day. I've literally probably last Friday, I dropped to my knees and I was in surrender, like, ah, take it from me. We can't carry the weight of the world. And I think as women, we think that we have to carry all of it, our marriage, our, our children, the business, the, all the relationships. And so I've had to be in full surrender to, uh, to God and just let him take all of my pain and all of it away. So I just, I try to be in the word every day and it helps me, helps to ground me so that I can live out the fruit of the spirit. Just like you're talking, Julie, those virtues um, are very much the fruit of the spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, right? All those things that we have to give to others. We have to be able to pour into ourselves. I love the word surrender. I was talking about the book, The Surrender Experiment. Uh, that's a Michael Singer book, if, if you guys uh, don't know about that one. Um, and uh, that idea, there is a palpable feeling of relief in that idea in my body, you know, the idea of surrender. Um, all right, Jennifer, you're going to be closing us out today. Tell us a little bit about, you know, we, we know about the morning walks, but I think there's probably other things you do to take care of yourself. In addition to that, what else do you want to tell us about that routine of yours? I would say, um, like Julie sleep, I try to get in bed by nine 30 and really shut down. Um, and try not to think too much and just shut it down and, um, then, you know, get up early and start the grind with the kids before my walk and all of that. But I think that that's the most important. And I do, I, I had listened to a podcast once that said, try to take 10 minutes a day to just lay down and shut your eyes and try to just wipe, wipe out your brain. And um, I do try to do that every day, just find 10 minutes to just close my eyes. And um, that does help. So I don't know if it's a nap, but <laughs> <take, laughs> taking that rest. It is a, a form of nap, I think. Yeah, you're making me think of this meditation that I've used. But if some of you know about the, and you and you made me think of it by saying wipe your brain, but the um, the brain waves, the alpha rhythm. If some of you understand about the meditations you can do for alpha alpha rhythm, it takes. I think it's a 27 minute minute thing that I listen to, and like by the end, I'm like, whoa! I just had the best nap 
you know, even though I was awake, like the whole time. So that that is one of the things that I have been doing when I really need a brain break, which is a really good thing to have. <laughs> Camille, Campins, Adams, Julie Campbell, Jennifer Bonk, thank you so much for what you do in the world and for being here to share it with everyone today. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. So listeners, you know, if this conversation is resonating, something one of these powerful women said today is just giving you the goosebumps. These are way more than books. This is a generous community of experts who are willing to take this conversation to the next level with you, guide you to the next step on your journey. So pop down into the show notes because I have everybody hooked up with their websites. Go explore, see what they're up to because it's a lot and it's amazing. And if you're ready to join us for a book launch party for We Lead, I'm going to have all of the authors we're going to be celebrating together on November 17th. That's going to be 10 to 11 Eastern. And I have some information down below about the party. Um, but if you're listening to this interview anytime after that, that means the book was already launched on Amazon and you can go find your copy there. Um, lastly, today, everyone, remember your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it is time to be brave. See you next time, everyone.